John, you have said that you were a homosexual for how long? 20 years? Over is that 20 over years. Over 20 years, yes. and the, you are converted now to heterosexuality. Um, may I assume active heterosexuality from what we were just talking about? As My two sons are watching as the program. Opposed to, okay. Um, I find that very difficult. Uh, please understand, I'm not going to sit here and call you a liar by any matter of means, but I do find that difficult to handle because in my opinion and my observation, um, probably the only, quote, transitional homosexuals around are those who have been in situations where there was no one of the opposite sex available, such as convicts who were in prison and who revert back to heterosexuality once they get back into mm -hmm. society again. May I ask you, and please say you don't want to answer it if you don't want to answer it, do you still ever have homosexual fantasies? Does that s still ever cross your mind at all? Let me answer it this way. Uh, we are not made with any kind of a forgetter. The human mind is made so that it has a very carefully functioning memory system. And many people who would like to make a transition and make some attempt to start find that because they remember something that happened, they don't think they're making any progress. Certainly, I can look back and I can remember the situations. I can remember the gay bars. I can remember the cruisings. I can remember the bedroom scenes in full detail and color. But I don't want it. It doesn't call to you anymore. I just don't want it. Why did you stop wanting it, or why did you find that you had the desire to make Because it I had been through a whole series of relationships in living in the gay world. Um, there were all kinds of um, relationships, of course not at the same time, but a succession of relationships. And out of each successive relationship, I learned something from that that no kind of argument could do away with. Um, I had seen the person that I had called my lover take off with my property and disappear. I had seen the person after an investment of a year or two of time, of consideration of what I thought was love, willing to trade me in for a perfect stranger. I had been through that situation where my lover had come to me and he said, well, in the interests of our relationship, more, a little bit with more finesse than I'm saying it, of course. Um, that um, in order to make our relationship better, it was now time that we had an open relationship. And that he would like to suggest that he would like to trick out and I could do the same thing because, and there I stopped, because of why? What is it in this relationship that makes it inadequate, that does not sustain the needs at the levels of emotion and basic trust and fidelity that are necessary in a relationship. But John, you must understand that all the things you have just mentioned have happened to straight people. Many of them and many times Shirley, over. Shirley, can I make something clear? There is no point in the world in trying to compare the best of the gay world with the worst of the heterosexual world and come up with anything objective. If you want to make a comparison, check out the heterosexual relationships of the Christian mothers and fathers who have lived together for 50 or 60 or 70 years. And in all that time, they never tricked out once. Okay, I can Whenever give you examples of several gay couples that I know who have been together for all practical purposes in a married type relationship, what? have been uh, totally faithful. There has been no tricking around, no what you call an open relationship uh, for anywhere from five to uh, 20 years. And frankly, to be honest with you, I know more gay couples that have been together longer and have happier relationships than I know straight couples. Then and that's a sad commentary on small, the straight world. You that move doesn't in a very speak very small well to the women's liberation then. movement and the friends that you associate with, if that's true, that's Carol, so because sure. that is yeah. really so abnormal. Would you, would you like Let's, to hear what I think about John's conversion? Please. I knew you would, Shirley. <laughs> I was never <laughs> gay in the first place. John, I never said that. <laughs> that now you let me this is my time. <laughs> He's heard that before. You, I let, I, no, yes, and I think, I think that there are a lot of people who are identifying themselves falsely in society. I think all Americans are, are very confused with the whole subject of sexuality, and right they should be, because we haven't started to do any sort of research until recently. If you are happier 
as a heterosexual, I am happy for you. I, from what you have said, I think you had some very negative experiences in the gay community. And Definitely. God knows there are a lot of negative experiences to be had in the gay community. And there are a lot more positive experiences in 1979 available to an individual as a heterosexual. But that's not because of a person's sexual orientation. That's because society lays out all kinds of encouragements for a person to have a healthy, happy, heterosexual marriage. And what does society say to two persons who come together, who are able and say, we would like to spend the rest of our lives together, living monogamously, loving each other selflessly. The church says, I can't approve that. Society, parents say, don't bring this person to my house at Christmas time or at Hanukkah. And so we, we sit, as, as whites did, when they were looking at blacks in the ghetto and said, how come these people can't keep their yards up? How come they have rats running through? These people couldn't afford anymore, and heterosexuals look at homosexuals and they say the same thing. How come these people can't keep their relationships together? And you can come here and say that some person walked out on you. I have never walked out on anybody in my life. But you've been walked out on. I've never been walked out All on. right, let me uh, stop, pause right here then. What did you mean in the article that you wrote, if that were not the case, Brian, when you said in describing your attempted suicide as the impassioned plea of a hopeless romantic for a love affair which would last? Mm -hmm. It sounds identical to uh, John Hansen's story when he attempted to take his life. It was because of a broken romance. Yeah. Are you denying well, then me, that you did not have a broken oh, romance no, but I which led fill you your, to the verge of fill suicide? Your viewer, viewers in on what the article is and what the suicide is. When I was at the Michigan Catholic as, this, as a columnist and I was 22 through 26 years old, I was what all Catholic parents in Detroit wanted their son and daughter to be like. I was a daily communicant. I spoke to the mother and son communion breakfasts. My column was reprinted as the Christmas card. And it card. Could, still could be if you well, just now, kept now, it to Shirley, yourself. Now, come on, you wanted sin. to know where I got, I well, cry. let now, let me finish. And I had a great deal of difficulty, given my spiritual base, with the kind of response I was getting from the public with the supposition that I was heterosexual. And I was in a relationship that wasn't working. And it wasn't working not because we were homosexuals, it wasn't working because of a major age difference. It wasn't working because I didn't ever have the opportunity as a high school student or as a college student to be introduced into the whole realm of courtship, which I'm sure you had many wonderful years blessed with. I never had the opportunity. What do you mean you didn't have the opportunity? The opportunity was there. You just didn't avail yourself of it when you were in high school. I dated women. Time. I dated women all the mm -hmm. way through high school and well, college. Well, then what more opportunity I was going to get married on three different occasions, but sexually I was not there. Mm -hmm. I, as hard as I tried, and as much help as I sought from psychiatrists, I could not make myself be sexually excited by a woman. I loved them deeply, okay? Dan and I did not have the opportunity. And I was in a relationship in which I felt I was, it was hypocritical, that I couldn't handle the pressure that I was receiving from work, who, people who didn't want to know about my private life, but at the same time constantly pressured me on who I was dating and when I was going to bring a woman to the, to the next staff party. And my suicide attempt, I drank a bottle of paint thinner, my suicide attempt was, I'm going home. I'm, I'm a kid at summer camp who can't keep the rules, and I'm going home to God. Because I know, despite what the church has taught us about suicide, that God is going to be far more compassionate than these people who surrounded me in my life. And it was only when I changed my mind and drove myself to the Catholic hospital and had my stomach pumped that I swore I would never live my life again based upon other people's expectations. And that, for me, is the essential aspect of the gospel, is right. self-love. All right, let's get That's to a, a call. Line three, you're on to the point. What causes homosexuality to develop in a male? Uh, homosexuality is caused in a four-stage process. It starts with silence. Um, children in the home situation, the school, the church, and the so so society are not taught to understand the function of themselves as beings within that society. The greatest offender, of course, in this silence business, for y your information, and it's hard to say, is the Christian community itself. Somehow, generally, Christians seem to think that God will make up the difference in adequate instructions as far as a child.